Alright, I am back with another Destiny 2 video, and I, we are heading back to an old topic, but one that I keep coming back to the idea that of all the kind of various things plaguing Destiny um, and preventing it from kind of being its best form and, and realizing its full potential, I just keep coming back to content vaulting. And I know that Bungie has written many essays about content vaulting and why it's necessary and why they're doing it, and yet it is still something I cannot really accept or wrap my head around. And I really don't want to get into like entitled player mentality here and armchair game dev and all of this stuff, but I think this is a very unique situation to Destiny. And I mean, granted, Destiny is a very unique game, but I think you could trace just so many of Destiny's issues to the fact that content vaulting happened and continues to happen. Um, we have seen De like Destiny reverse course on big things before. Like we had weapon sunsetting, which was not technically content vaulting, but that was their big plan to kind of eliminate power creep and keep the gear grind fresh. And everybody hated it so much they just killed it outright. Um, content vaulting may be harder to challenge because it is something they're doing on the technical side, but content vaulting has created so so many problems and continues to to this day. Uh, so. An article I wrote earlier today was about, um, I went through a thread about how people were talking about what the biggest issue facing Destiny is right now. And far and away, without question, the, the number one thing that kept being brought up was the new player experience. And that really did not used to be a thing, uh, not to this extent at least. I think we had a brief golden window where after Destiny went free to play, and before content vaulting happened, we had this period of time where you could get the entire base campaign, all the Red War campaign, uh, the first two DLCs, Crystal Osiris and Warmind, and the first three seasons, um, Forge, Drifter, and Opulence, all for free. That was all part of the free content. And not only was it a lot of content, it was something that you could run through in some semblance of an order. If you told me, if you... If a new player asked me, you know, I want to play Destiny, where do I start? I'd be, download the game, play the Red War campaign. The Red War campaign is not, like, the greatest thing ever, obviously. Like, it has its issues, and, you know, it, it was better than Destiny 1's campaign, certainly. But uh, it served as a very kind of coherent introduction to Destiny as a game, and it told a complete story. Uh, and then after that, you could be like, all right, well, play through the very few missions of Curse of Osiris, uh, and then play through Warmines, and then you can kind of take your pick of what seasonal, free seasonal content you want to dip into, like Forges or uh, Menagerie and stuff like that. And then it becomes more of a mixed bag. And then maybe, okay, then maybe you'll buy a new expansion and, and start and keep going with the series. Now that's all gone. The first three years of content or whatever it is now is, is gone due to content vaulting. And the current new player experience is a very short Shahan quest, which like it explains the mechanics of Destiny pretty well. I think it explains the mechanics actually better than the Red War did, but it is not a coherent campaign. It's just a very small handful of kind of handheld missions uh, to, to give you the barest of introduction. And then once you're done with that, players essentially have no idea what to do because all of that other con that story content is gone. It is either do a bunch of random playlist activities or try and buy one of the random expansions or try and buy a current season and catch up with that, even though you're missing four years of content in between that. So that is one aspect that content vaulting has brought upon us. Another aspect is something else that was brought up in the current issues list, which is stale playlists. Um, content vaulting cut an astonishing amount of content from those playlists. Uh, the Vanguard playlist, I don't remember how many strikes it lost. It was some, I thought it was like seven strikes or 11 strikes. I, lost a whole lot of strikes uh, when that content went away. And it has added more over time, added Battlegrounds, but it, you know, it lost all of that stuff and it seems very unlikely that it's ever going to return. We cut a ton of Crucible maps, some of which may have been underperforming and stuff, but we didn't replace those with anything. Not at all. We got one new Crucible map in, in three years. Gambit lost, what, I don't know how to do this math, but like, what, 30% of its maps, like it lost two out of its six maps, so it lost a third of its maps, and there were no besides that that will return again. That was all due to content vaulting. Uh, and then also what this has done now 
is because of content vaulting, even projects that seem like they should be cool and ambitious are still tainted by that. So for instance, this is something that continues to this day with Season of the Haunted. And while it was cool to see the Leviathan come back and be all transformed and gross and egregore filled now, a common pushback I saw was that this was just Bungie returning something to the game that they shouldn't have taken out in the first place. And you can see the argument that they could have just left Leviathan in the whole time and then transformed it with Egregore this season. And this keeps happening where, you know, it, it is hard to, quote, give Bungie credit for, you know, bringing back two of the 11 Crucible maps that they uh, took away or, you know, um, I don't know what they're going to do next, but if they brought back Mars or something, like, it is hard to give them, you know, too many props for, for stuff that has been removed. And, like, it is almost unthinkable to, you know, translate what is happening in Destiny to any other game. Like, I remember, the, you know, the other day when uh, there was this thing for a minute where Ubisoft looked like it was going to stop selling a bunch of its DLC or, like, it would prevent you from having access to that DLC uh, even if you had bought it already. And it was, like, this whole thing, and then they had to, like, clarify, no, 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 that's not what's happening. But, like, that is literally what Destiny has done through this entire situation. And it, they keep doing it because you keep buying seasonal content that goes away after a year. And this isn't just on the player side. I have to imagine, to some extent, it is somewhat frustrating to do work on a game like this of this scale of this quality and have it continually removed like i it is I, I cannot wrap my head around the idea that destiny is a better game after losing things like the whisper mission like zero hour like um presage which probably is one of it, it could be presage could be its best mission ever that is that is one of my opinions is i think that is one of destiny's best missions ever and it is gone it lasted for, I don't know, nine months or, or however long it was, but it is gone. We have no reason to think it'll ever return. Uh, and then on top of that, we've lost, what, five raids, <laughs> you know, the entire story campaign of the base game and two DLCs. Uh, we lost some of its best multiplayer activities ever, like Menagerie. Uh, and when that is returned, it has been like, here's the Menagerie zone, you're doing something else in it. It's not the same thing. And... Uh, it, it is hard for me to think of a, a comparable game series that does anything remotely close to this. And again, the explanation that Bungie's, Bungie has given here is that this is a technical problem where there was a combination of too many activities, which requires splitting the player base too much, which, eh, I don't know how much I, I believe that. And then some concern about hard drive space. Again, I don't really care about that. If most of my hard drive has to be devoted to Destiny 2 on my consoles, not the end of the world, and games like Call of Duty are doing this all the time already, so it's not really that big of a deal. But then there's like technical behind-the-scenes stuff where they did a bunch of engine overhauls and they have to like manually redo everything. Like I am certainly not saying that this is not a lot of work, but I, I maintain it needs to be a priority for Bungie to end content vaulting and bring back the stuff they content vaulted, at least a lot of it, because they can say, oh, we want to focus on building new stuff for players and whatever, like, but I, I think they're missing the forest for the trees here. And I know they, they need to keep building seasonal stuff and whatever, but they're like, without things to offer free to play players, offer new players, clear paths like the Red War campaign, to guide players through the initial parts of Destiny and to catch them up in the story, frankly, where we now have just absurd situations where Cade shows up in, like, one strikes dialogue and some patrol missions. And, like, if you're starting Destiny now, you don't even know who this guy is because now the Forsaken campaign doesn't even exist. And this is just getting worse in time. Instead of doing things that seem kind of obvious, to me, at least, like, they should have made Forsaken free. All this other stuff aside, the next move I thought they were going to do was make Forsaken free, like, for the long term. And they made it free for like a couple of months or whatever. But um, that would have at least been some sort of starting point where I could have been like, okay, starting the game, first expansion's free, it's Forsaken. It has a coherent story, even if you don't know who the guy is who dies at the beginning. You could kind of understand 
the overall plot. They didn't do that. They cut the whole Forsaken campaign, cut Tinkled Shore, and then kept, like, they, they're doing what they can. Like, they kept the Dreaming City, they kept the raid, they kept one of the strikes, the dungeon. So, like, they're trying to pare back maybe a little bit, but we also still have gotten in situations where, you know, the, the exorcism of Savathun mission lasted for a week until it was vaulted, and no one will ever get to play that again. We have stuff like, uh, it, like, it's crazy to me, like, back in season of, like, designing something like the Tree of Silver Wings and, like, how beautiful that space was and, um, you know, that series of missions. And, like, that was something that existed in the game for three months and will never be seen again over its five, six, seven-year lifespan. Um, well, this is a live game and you're meant to kind of keep up with it, that it, it isn't realistic to expect most players to be me. You have to, like, write in breaks, whether those are seasonal breaks or year breaks. You have to have some allowance for that. And Destiny does not have an allowance for that. And I think this renewed focus on bringing in crap from Destiny 1 is bad. I, I don't I don't think that's, like, it is more stuff put in Destiny. But, like, as long as content vaulting keeps existing, we have the situation where a bunch of random Destiny stuff is being added strikes and raids and whatever that have nothing to do with the current story but technically like that stuff free players can can play but it's not it's not catching them up to lost destiny content it's not filling them in on the story it's not doing any of that and then we have new stuff coming on the other side where my hands are backwards because of this video but <laughs> we have new stuff coming with the new seasons and new expansions but slowly the old expansions are getting sunset it is pretty, you know, the, the running theory is that Shadowkeep is probably going to be vaulted next to some degree, whether the moon itself goes away or whatever, but, you know, the, the way this is moving, that seems to be the trend. And then each new season is gone after a year. Um, you know, in other games, when the season is just a battle pass, it doesn't really mean anything, but in Destiny, when the season is really substantive story content and missions and things like that, that is significant. And... I think Bungie is doing themselves a disservice by by focusing purely on essentially both future content and then reprise Destiny 1 content and continuing to content vault stuff and then not bringing stuff back at a reasonable pace. Like Leviathan coming back, that was forward progress. That is literally the first significant thing we have gotten back from content vaulting. Even though technically it is not fully back, it like the some of the space is back, but the Leviathan raid isn't back, the raid layers aren't back. Um, all of that stuff is not back. So it's only like kind of halfway there. And given that new player acquisition and retention is Destiny's biggest problem, like I do not think it is unreasonable to try like to to ask them to maybe this needs to be re looked at again. Maybe the concept of content vaulting is doing a lot more harm to Destiny's overall health over the long term than it could. Because, you know, it's not like Destiny's crashing in players or something, but how much could it have grown if it had a more coherent presentation to new players? Which, like I said this in my article, but like, it is crazy to me that I can be as huge of a Destiny fan as I am, play it so often, and if someone says, like, hey, I'm thinking about playing Destiny 2, like, should I play it? Like, what do I start with? I, I still do not know how to answer that in this current situation. Like, I don't know whether to tell them to do the Shahan quests and just see if they like that, because I don't know if that's going to be enough to hook people. I don't know whether to tell them to buy the, the earliest available expansion, which is Shadowkeep, because I don't think that's a good place to start. I don't know whether them to tell them to buy the Witch Queen, the last expansion, because they've skipped so much stuff, or just to do the current season, where they've skipped everything, but at least they're current. Like, I... I coming up with a coherent path for new players now it is difficult. And like for me as a super fan, it's difficult, but for Bungie with marketing, I, I don't, I don't even think they're trying at this point. Like they're, they're so they're just focused on future content and the existing player base that, you know, they make comments that like, Oh, well, once the saga of light and dark is over, it'll be kind of a reset and people will be able to catch up and, and whatever. But like, that's like two and a half years away. And like, I don't know if, if, Destiny can, you know, exist like this for all of this time and keep content vaulting and keep cutting, like, in, you know, a year, Shadow Keep's gone, in two years, Beyond Light's gone, three years, Witch Queen's gone, like, I think that is a bad system, and it makes me feel bad about my purchases, given that I am spending all this money on stuff that is ethereal, like, it, it vanishes after 
seasonal stuff after a year, uh, expansion stuff after, I don't know, two or three years, it, it depends. And then random stuff in there like the dungeon pack. Are those dungeons going to be in there forever? Are those going to last two years? Are they going to last five years? No idea. But because content vaulting is a thing, you can no longer feel confident about the nature of your purchases and their permanence. And again, this is something in any other game, if you started talking about like, uh, you know, Borderlands 3 is going to remove the four DLCs that people paid for. Everyone would be like, what the hell? Like, what? Why? Like, you can't you can't do that. That's crazy. Like, that's insane. You, you can't do that. And they would be right to be mad about that. But, like, this has just been kind of par for the course with Destiny. And we were kind of just told we have to accept this technical answer. And there is no other answer here. I... I struggle to think that, that that this is the path the game needs to take over the long term. And I just, I want Cut Vaulting to end, and I think they need to bring a lot of the stuff back that people bought and paid for, and that was implied would and should come back, because they every time you would say something is deleted, they'd be like, no, no, it's not deleted, it's in the Content Vault. And yet, all the stuff out of the Content Vault that of any significance has been a bunch of Destiny 1 stuff. And that I do not think is is the same principle here. So I just I can't I can't really accept it. And I think like Bungie can do whatever they want. I'm not demanding they do anything. I just think that content vaulting has hurt the game maybe more than they even realize. Like both in terms of like it's a huge range. Everything from new player acquisition to current players being hyped about a current season when a current season is mostly about the reprisal of something that got deleted that shouldn't have been deleted in the first place, stuff like that. And then there's a huge range of stuff in between of stuff that was uh, erased that, um, you know, it's a problem there. And again, like we saw, we saw this kind of pushback against sunsetting and that was removed, but uh, it may be just Bungie cannot get around the technical aspects of this, or they do not want to devote the resources to it. But I think it needs another look. And I, I do not think this is a viable path for the game going forward like maybe destiny can yeah, i'm sure destiny will survive no matter what happens it's just i think they are really really losing out on a potential opportunity to dramatically increase their player base so once you were in destiny like once you were on the track it there are a few games i i think that can um you know routinely fulfill your you know your enjoyment uh you know season to season like i think they're doing an overall great job of that and they, we have seen some dramatic improvements in terms of the scope of what goes inside expansions and seasons and like that has all been fantastic but this other part of this i think is still an issue and remains an issue uh and i i would like to see it not just kind of brushed under the rug as it has been since content Baltic started so uh those are my thoughts probably will not be the last time i talk about this but this just kind of got brought up all over again based on recent conversations so anyway thanks for watching and i will talk to you later take care